So the first, the first thing is why why are we talking about putting our schemas in the form? That's the first question to ask. And uh, I guess the answer is that anomalies arise. So I'll write down <laughs> anomalies right here. Let's see. I have my trusty notes. Um, I guess the most obvious one would be redundancy. Um, I guess I'll, when we come to them, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by these things. Insertion, deletion, and one more. What was it? <coughs> Update, I guess. It's very similar to insertion and deletion <laughs> in some sense. <laughs> uh, it could be, com you know, I guess you could use these two. <laughs> to get update. But um, in any case, um, I guess the, the, the idea is to try and minimize the, the chance for error in your, in your database by making your tables nice and foolproof, I guess, or as foolproof as possible. And so we're going to learn about, uh, we're going to talk about uh, five different uh, normal forms. And really, in reality, maybe like, Three, <laughs> uh, because two of them are kind of fake. They're not. But wh what's that? Invented by graduate students. Well, no, I mean two of them are trivial, kind of is what I mean. Um, in any case, so I guess I'll I'll start with an example, to motivate. So my example is this. Oh, um, I should say this is shamelessly ripped off from this great. Uh, Great little survey on normal forms, circa 1982, that I'll post you guys. Post up on the website later. But um, just to give credit where credit's due, number one is, so my example is, let's say I have some inventory of parts in a warehouse. A part, warehouse, uh, let's say, and I have quantity and warehouse address. Is that how you spell address? Yeah. All right, and what's the primary key here? The primary key will be the part and the warehouse. So for each part and for each of my storage warehouses, I, I list how many you know, of the part I have and the address of the warehouse. Uh, so this is obviously a dumb idea, right? Because I have to, uh, what's the problem here? I have to, basically every time I, I update something, every time I, I have to put a part in my, in my inventory, I also have to write down the ad address of the warehouse. Um, so, and this will, you know, A, a, a is redundant, I'm taking up too much space. Uh, B, um, even if I just want to insert the address of the warehouse, you know, and I don't have any parts to put in yet. This this thing is is messed up. I need a. I don't have a primary key without a part. All right. So somehow, you know, if I just it doesn't let me put my address in there, it's not very nice. And also, I mean, conversely, if I delete if I delete uh, a part, I might you know the only part that's in a certain warehouse, I might get rid of its address by accident. Um, or if I change the address of the warehouse, I'd have to remember to change the address in every one of the uh, for every one of the entries. Mm -hmm. right, so this is I mean inefficient for a lot of ways, uh, or in a lot of ways. So how do I fix this? Uh, well, I make two tables, right? Um, <coughs> is the first normal form we're using to? Well, this is not even in first. Okay. No, well I should say. For, well, since what you, is this in violation of which normal? Well, uh, it's in violation of second normal form. Uh, this one doesn't even satisfy second normal form. First normal form is really stupid. Okay, so I'll just put it down here in the in the corner. <laughs> uh, you know, all you know, all basically all attributes are atomic. You know, like uh, string, integer, etc. So I can't I can't have you know, one of my columns be another table or something or some structure, you know. So it's just sort of, it's not even, 
It's almost not worth mentioning because it's. Why don't the DBMSs prevent it? Seems to be the the most important one. Seems that. Well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Usually, that's what the you know the revolutionaries always sort of throw away the 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 most basic assumptions. So I'm treating it as like a most basic assumption. Um, (laughs) As we storm the barricades. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It does also indicate, though, that there are no, you don't have multiple values in one cell. So there is, mm-hmm. you certainly can make something that's not first number form in a relational database. Comma separated values in yeah, one cell. Yeah, comma separated values in the same oh, cell. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like it's automatic. Well, I mean, uh, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in any case, um, so what's the solution here? What's, I mean, I'm not, I guess I'm not going to define what second normal form is yet. I'll just write down what the, the obvious solution is, is to split these things up, right? So I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have my part, the warehouse, quantity, And then I'm going to have another table, which is the warehouse and the warehouse address. So this is bad. So now, if I want to change my warehouse address, I only have to do it in one spot. And everything is good. Um, so before I define, so this this is now in second normal form, and it wasn't here. But I should define a few things before I say what second normal form is. Um, What's this comma separated value? What? The thing that Michael asked about? I'm sure. There's like hacks. You can't put four names in one cell and like separate them with some as a string that you would later extract. So okay. you, you can't like put comma separated values in one cell and then process it. Because you, like you, can, you can, but it would buy the first plus one. one. If you had a table person independence, and so person was uh, somebody, and then dependents were son one, comma son two, comma son three, uh, you could store that in a database, but that wouldn't be in first normal form. Because so my question is, so you can do that, you said? Yeah, you yeah, can do that. So one cell. Yeah. Sure. You can do anything you like. Is there any limit to the number of blobs? <coughs> it's not. It's not. Saying, it's not like there's a mechanism for it in the DBMS. Or just you can do it as a string and put commas in there, and then you can parse them out on your own. Oh, I understand. That's all. Yeah, I understand. You're you're gonna fake it conceptually, but as far as it's concerned, you're not faking it. As far as it's right. concerned, it's just one thing there. One string. Right. 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 All right. Well, I'm the question here was how is it possible to violate first normal form? Yeah, that's violating. Because I mean, semantically, that's violating. Okay, it's violating. That makes sense. Now you're violating. Right. 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 Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. It's not a character. <laughs> All right. So before I can define any more of these normal forms, I have to tell you what what I mean by functional dependency. And I bet you're all eager, sitting on the edge of your chairs. All right. So so if I have a relational schema, like the thing I just erased, for example. Um, so an X and Y are, they don't have to be attributes, they can be lists of attributes. Well, let me let me pause here. So I hate giving the most general definition, but uh, let me get to the, let me do an example first, and I'll continue the definition. Um, 
So the example is, so warehouse is functionally dependent on warehouse address. So what does that mean? That means, you know, if I have a row and I tell you what the warehouse is, there's a unique choice for the warehouse address. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what this notation means. But you said, did, you, did, you oh, did I say it backwards? I think yeah, I said it backwards. Okay. Warehouse address is functionally dependent on warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Function, warehouse functionally determines. You're right. Well, it might it's be. probably one to one. It's probably one to one. Um, mm. Let's. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, so. Um, is warehouse address is functionally dependent on warehouse? Yeah, warehouse address is functionally dependent on warehouse. Yes. I should write that down. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense linguistically. Which means if you know warehouse, you know the address? Yeah. Was it you? Yeah. Dependent <laughs> on warehouse. <laughs> so, yeah, if you know So this uniquely determines warehouse address. Now, um, I should say this is a property. It's not a property of any particular set of data you have. Like it might be, you know, you might have some coincidental setup where, you know, like the price of tea in China uniquely determines in your database, uniquely determines the price of the chairs. <laughs> you know, being sold at Ars Digita or something. But it, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to do with some coincidental data. You know, it, I mean, when we say functionally dependent, we mean sort of kind of abstractly in the schema before you get any data. Um, all right. Um, so, but in general, I guess I could have, you know, I could have more than one thing here, right? I could have a few attributes. If I if I know all of them, it determines a bunch of other attributes. So, in general, these could be lists of things. And um, huh, this is the notation that you use in the book, so I'm trying to stick to it. So if these are lists of attributes, x or y means, you know, if t and s are, I guess, rows in the database, or rows in the, um, or I'd say just tuples, I'll just call them tuples. Then, you know, if they agree on x, then they must agree on y. So that's functional dependence. t dot x equals s dot x implies t dot y <coughs> equals s dot y. All right. Now, you actually know, you already have one example like this you've been dealing with all the time. And that is primary key, or just any key in general. I mean, that's the sort of most extreme example. So, so for example, let's say A is a key for, for some table, A, B, C. Then what functional dependency does that give me? It tells me that if I know what A is, it uniquely determines B and C. Yeah? All right. Um, or, I mean, you know, similarly, if you have some other table, S, A, B, C, D, and I tell you that A, B is the key, I could, is a key, I guess. I'm not saying it's the primary key. Then I could write something like this. And that means that if I know A and B, I can figure out what C and D are. Okay, and these are sort of things you figure out based on, you know, properties you have of, uh, of these databases. All right, so. Mitch, before you go, I just mm -hmm. had a question. The, uh, 
I always say it like you said, and a lot of people do, that when, when you have a functional dependency that A uh, is functionally dependent on B, that you think that when you know B, then you, you can figure out A. Well, you can That's look it up, I guess. Right, but, but there's nothing implied in the definition that there's any kind of actual way. Computational way. Computational it's not, there's no function. The you, can't, you can't input the string, you know, and like add the ASCII values, and is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean that... It, it's just an abstract sort of... It just thing. means that if, that, if, that if two of these things were the same, then, they're, then the other column would have the same values too, even though there might not be any obvious way. Yeah, this is not, not, yeah, yeah, it's not dealing with any a priori sort of relationships that we can figure out. So it's not functional as in computation, uh, computable function, I guess. Right, right. Yeah, but that's a good point. Yeah. No, just because, because, I mean, I sometimes get mixed up when I think about it in a computational way, because I think things are functional dependencies when they are, because there's no way to obviously compute it. But there doesn't have to be any way to obviously compute No, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Um, it is, because especially using the word function is, uh, is misleading. It's you know, a good old mathematical function. For those of us without a math background. What's that? For those of us without a ma math background, it's not all you know, we can do with it. Not going to get off. So, so anyways, now I can tell you what um, second normal form is, and that's pretty useless too. <laughs> Everything is pretty much in second normal form, but um, it's not an interesting one. But the second normal form, excuse me, says that. So let's see, uh, relational schema R is in two and F. If uh, hmm. how can I say this? I guess if there's no, I should I should rewrite what we had. Multi-attribute key. We had the part. We had the warehouse was the key, and we had the quantity and the warehouse address, right? And the problem was we had this where warehouse address was dependent on warehouse. Okay. Now, basically, second normal form says you can't do this. So um, there's no there's no functional dependency FD from a subset of a, uh, I guess from a subset of a Ooh, be careful here. What word did you use? Candidate key? I think candidate, you use candidate key. I mean, here's my question. How have you defined key? Oh, many ways. <laughs> All right, because you can define key. key is a potential key. All right, I but mean, could be, it's is, it, is, is it minimal, key. though? Is it minimal in the number of attributes or no? Um, well, shouldn't it be that it's... Oh, otherwise, yeah, otherwise it's a yeah. whatchamacallit key. Super, super key. So, yeah, right. so you distinguish between super key and key? Yeah. Mm. All right. All right. All right. Then I can say there's no functional dependency from a subset of a key. Any key. Yeah. No key I guess I should say from key. some key. So the candidate key, the candidate key emphasizes that it emphasizes that it could be a primary key. Is that how you could or it? Could, that it could be could not be. a primary key. Right. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll use candidate key then if no one objects. Okay. All right, so the problem here is. So is this actually, it's, it is in QNF if there's no functional dependency? Yeah. Right, so this thing is not in QNF. But is your, is your sentence stated correct up there? It is not in QNF if there's no functional dependency? This is in QNF because there is no functional dependency. Is in, <laughs> is in sorry. All right, so basically 2NF says that you need the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key you know, <laughs> to, uh, to be able to determine, you know, uniquely determine things mm -hmm. in, in generality. So you can't, you can't have some funky relationship here. And this actually brings, brings us up to the, the heuristics that I could glean, at least, for dealing with these things. The general heuristic is that 
things that are completely independent should be in different tables. <laughs> and, you know, things, I guess if there's some things that are, so when you're breaking off the independent pieces, you know, group, group the things that depend on one half together, you know, like, so keep, keep things that, that are really dependent on each other together and keep things that are completely independent apart from each other. General sort of heuristic. But, um, so, in this case, there's a dependency here that's kind of, that's kind of bad, that this thing is really just dependent on that. So we should just move it up. That's what we did. Um, all right, but that's kind of vague, so I'll, I'll keep on going. Um, I didn't really define what, I defined what functional dependence was. I didn't really define what independence was. <laughs> so I have to do that. Um, All right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I wanted to ask a question to the class to give me something to think about while you're... What's your question? The, um, why is it bad to have something that's, uh, that's not second normal form? Like, what could happen in your database that could mess up the database somehow? If uh, you came in late, didn't you, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good, you know, good recap. <laughs> Looking back at my <laughs> no, but I, I, go on, go on. What, what's bad? Potential for data corruption, redundancy, um, <laughs> You know, that's just like, so. What's a specific example that would mess up here, like? That a specific example of warehouse address. Yeah, for example. Like, like so, you need, so in other words, under that schema, you need a part in order to insert a warehouse address. Right. You could insert two different warehouse addresses for the same warehouse, um, and you're creating, you're taking up extra space. Or if you Any time you add a part, you have to repeat the warehouse you address. address. You yeah. yeah. If you're deleting a part, because the uh, and the warehouse is the only one carrying the part, you lose the address. Mm -hmm. And if you change the address, you have to hunt down and replace the curves. And okay. Now, I'm not sure how many of those, though, are specifically related to the second normal formness. Are they? I mean, how many of those, <coughs> for how many of those is it a factor that it's a subset of the key that's well, dependent on those? Table, but what if the dependence... Well, if, would if those still be a problem if, if the dependency was from, say, quantity to uh -huh. warehouse address? Mm -hmm. Well... That brings us <laughs> to uh, some other things. Um, well, okay, so I apologize. I, um, I, I, have a, I don't have very many examples, you know, and that's, that, that, that's, that's tough. So um, let's see. Let me write down. So there's two... What, you're, what you bring up is something called 3NF, <laughs> surprisingly enough, or um, third normal form. Okay, so let's, let's write down this example. Let's say I have some, some employee list, and it has employee department and, say, location of department. All right, so this is in, is this in 2NF? Uh, no. no. Why? Uh, well, the employee is the key. Yeah. Yes. So I have a little employee table, and I, I, in my table, I say where the employee, you know, for every employee, what department the employee works in, and the location, you know, the address of that, you know, I guess address, I should say. How's that? Address of the department. Okay, and my primary key is the employee. So that, that doesn't violate anything so far in 2NF. Okay, but still, this is what Chris was bringing up, that mm -hmm. there is a dependency here. What's the dependency? Department to address. Okay, so this is actually, I should say, this is not in 3NF. <laughs> I should. Um, now the question is, could this, could this also bring up problems? 
some of these same. Yeah, it has exact same problems. It's not so that's why 2NF is kind of lame because you know it's a little a little specific. You know, this, I mean, there's the same. You know, we get the same kind of dependency problems even if you're not dealing with your primary keys or keys in general. So, um, is department a key here? No. So, just because I underline something doesn't mean it's the only key, right? But is department a key? No. Not really. I mean, not in most yeah. circumstances you can imagine. No, because there would have to be one employee yeah. per department. Right. Okay, good. What's that? Keys do not have to be unique. Keys do? Yeah, but they Well, when you... What's that? Key or uniquely identify What do you mean by keys have to be unique? I'm asking. So in, in, in the... The values of the key have to be unique. There isn't a unique key given a relation. Sometimes you can choose... You could choose... Like if you have a big table... You know, employee social security number, other random ID number, blah blah blah. You could choose many different things to be the key. Right. Yeah. But as long as you identify each row uniquely, you're fine. Right. But the key identifies more than one row, then it can be. Right. So I mean, just in the way the book uses the word key, many things could be right. possibly be a key. Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. We're all on the same page. Uh, all right. So, anyways, so this is not in three and F. Um, and you guessed it. So 3NF says, um, so it basically says no non-key to non-key dependencies and 2NF also. Okay. Um, and two and All right, so so this is a little stronger. Okay, it gets rid of a lot of problems. Um, now, there's something else which is very very similar called BCNF. Okay, voice cod normal form. So let me draw this picture. So we have relations there's one NF, two NF. Ah I didn't budget well. Nice. Yeah, shy. <laughs> oh. Start from the inside? All right, let me try that. Semicircles? These are hierarchical, but they can't be in. Yeah, the way they're the way they're defined. So. So there's five NF. 4NF, BCNF, 3NF, 2NF, 1NF, relations. All right. So, and most of these aren't, I mean, these are the ones that are kind of interesting. Those are so interesting. So, BCNF is right in between here, and it's, the definition of that is that, um, so notice I said that whenever you have a, something that's a key, you automatically get these dependencies, right? So that's the definition of BCNF. That is, those are the only dependencies you get, all right? So BCNF, voice cod normal form. So this is one of the people who coined uh, Several of these normal forms, and maybe maybe Boyce too. Cod, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So basically, Boyce Cod normal form says 
Um, so the only dependencies are of the form key to stuff. So now, yeah, none of this stuff really deals with intra-table, intra-table uh, dependencies or questions. If you have a, a table with say, employee ID and then social security number and then address, is that that's not in two now? Employee social security number, so that they're both be unique, and then address. Okay, so. so you pick the ID. So the question is. So let's say I have employee ID, SSN, and phone number. So each of these could be, you're saying each of these could be a primary key? Yeah. So, so this is a good question, actually. I didn't make it very clear. So let's say I pick this one. Is this in 3NF or not? So when I say key, I don't mean primary key. I mean any potential key. So it's okay. There are dependencies here, right? So these are all all possible keys. What's that? All right, you're right. People could be roommates. All right. So employee ID SSN are possible keys, right? So you have We have all these dependencies, SSN, E goes to phone, I guess SSN, uh, E goes to S, E goes to P, S goes to E, S goes to P. Actually, even have S goes to S and E goes to E. You got to throw those in there too, if you, if you want. But uh, but the question is, does this violate the definition? Apparently, it does. Only, right? Because key to key functional dependency is is or is not violated. All right. So this is this is where the, this definition is very misleading, I guess. If you're dealing with primary keys, this means any potential key. So these are all okay. This is okay. So things that are. So. Wait. Other things. So basically. So this says non-key to non-key. Okay, anything that's a potential key, you whenever you have something that's a potential key, you automatically get, you automatically get those dependencies because anything that's potential key will uniquely determine this all the rest of the stuff. Why isn't it in 2NF, right? Um, why isn't it in 2NF? That's a good question. Because a subset SSN, which is a subset of the key, or which is the key, points to P. The phone is dependent. Oh, so 2NF says no proper subset. I mean, oh, okay. Not oh, yeah. right. Obviously, a full key. The full key always <laughs> uniquely, you know, determines yeah. everything, and there's dependencies. Okay. So basically, well, that's the thing. It's not. It, it's sort of something you have to just think about. I mean, it, depending on your situation, you have to sort of look at it and say, well, these are. These should be dependent, or these shouldn't be. I mean, but so part of it is guesswork, or. Maybe you could use statistics, you know, for some things like, you know, run a model and say, well, these really are dependent somehow. But we're assuming that that's that's sort of given from above. Someone else has decided that what things are functionally dependent and what aren't. We use some other reasoning ability to figure that out. Yeah. So. All right. So this isn't this isn't three enough. All right, so it's just so when I say key, it means any potential key, anything that could be a key. Um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. All right, and again, how do you fix this thing? Break it up again. Mm -hmm. so fix it by breaking it up generally. But what's a trade-off though? If you keep on breaking things up, then you always have to join. Right, right. So like. There's all there is a potential trade-off here. You know, you could 
split things up and then pay the price later if you're going to have to do a million joins, you know, all these like minuscule tables with lots of, or a few columns and, you know, so there's, there's trade-offs. Um, yeah? Wouldn't the E to P dependency um, be a non-key to non-key dependency that's in violation of 3 and F? Well, okay, it's not non, doesn't say non-primary key, just see, says non-any key. E is a potential key. Employee ID, so I'm saying keys, so potential keys, so when, I'm not saying primary key, so keys here, the keys here are candidates, so EID and SSN. So primary key, Is SSN. By choice? Yeah, I just wrote I just wrote this underline here, I guess. I'm sorry. I should have met, said what I meant there. Um, all right. So again, how do you fix this? You break it up. So again, now what do we have? We have employee, department. So we have two tables. We have that, and then we have department and department address. So same, same kind of thing, actually. Okay. And now this is fine. I don't get any, any bad dependencies. Okay. Um, and this kind of makes sense, right? Nothing, nothing. You haven't learned anything new. Right? You guys. We're all good database programmers and would would do that anyway. So on this BCNF, this thing is key to stuff. In other words, you mean stuff kind of logically connected to the key, is what you mean? Um, any stuff. Basically, it doesn't really matter what's on here because once you have a key, you can get everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost that's by definition. So stuff is n non. Uh, Non-candidate key. Anything. Anything. I mean, here so I could put. Side, it can be anything. It right? could be anything. I can put E goes to E. That's a, that's a valid dependency. I mean, it's it's silly, but. Redundancy is really criteria. You're saying well, there is there is redundancy. Hmm. Is there a redundancy here? There is redundancy in the sense that, like this. This is redundant because this address gets repeated. Well, let's say you just made up two columns that are identical. EID. Is there anything in these rules that eliminates that? Oh, you mean in this problem here? Yeah. Two things that are identical. Later, There's right? nothing. There's nothing in. Isn't one of the later normal forms not having the same information twice in the table or something? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Let me let me think about that. Let me just. Um, <coughs> So you mean having exactly the same copy? I don't think so, actually. I don't think so. Idea? If I had another fake FEID <laughs> with the same numbers, I don't think I can get rid of that using that. That wouldn't violate 3 and F. No. No, I don't think so. No. They each depend on each other, right? Yeah. But that's fine. For both candidates. Yeah. So A goes to B, B goes to A. Yeah. You don't think that's allowed? Well, we're in big trouble now. Yeah, that's kind of. I'm pretty sure that's allowed. Yeah? I'm not sure quite the difference between third normal form and voice cod normal form. There's a very subtle difference. Can, can you give an example of something that's in third normal form but is not in voice cut? Um, I will. <laughs> I don't have one prepared here. But basically, the, the subtle difference is, uh, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. There's, the subtle difference here is that you can have dependencies of the form, something of a non-key to a key dependency in 3NF. 3NF is slightly weaker. And 
So that that's sort of it's kind of implicit in the way this is written here that I um, the only dependencies are key to something, whereas there I could have non key to. Something. That's not. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. And, but yeah, I'll come up with an example in. in well, let, let's just do it in recitation because it'll probably, you know, be the best thing to do. Um, but in any case, I mean, the the only reason. Well, I'll I'll, I'll try and elaborate on this more. I mean, there's there's. This is more natural to sort of define BCNF, but this is easier. Um, it's not very clear to me what these non-key dependencies are. You want to avoid what anomalies do they lead? Well, these not these things like this. Yeah. Well, they're just the same anomalies as before. Yeah. You know. Just in general. Yeah. Except. Yeah. So that's why I mean, it's this. The book just starts with three three NF. You know, there's no real reason to talk about two NF. So, but I did. <laughs> I, just, I just don't see how a key can depend on a non-key. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, or part of a non-key. Um, well, l let's talk about it later, because otherwise I'll spell gibberish. You don't want that, do you? <laughs> All right. Um, part of the key. What's that? It could be a subset of a compound key. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the last thing I want to talk about is the other type of problem that can come up. You know, we have dependency here. The other, the other problem is independence. When you have things that don't really have anything to do with each other in a table. So, so this is called, I guess. Well, I guess the fancy word is multi-value dependency. Well, I'm not so sure. I like that word. OK, so what if I had some so a table like that had, say, an employee's employee again? And that's, well, the list say the, what the employee can do, their skills, and also so what languages they speak? Wait, the employees a key in that table? Well, here's the question. What would the what should the what's a key here for this? I'm gonna have a table, it's a list of you know, for every skill I can think of and language they speak, I'm gonna put something in this table. It's gotta be all, it's gonna be all three. All three. All three, right? Um, so you have common separated values in skills and languages. <laughs> <laughs> Zero number <laughs> four. <laughs> all right. So pretty much all three of these things are are needed. Now, but what's the problem here? The problem is that um, somehow these are not related at all. So what am I going to do? Like I have to have a convention for how I'm going to deal with. So let's say. Uh, so like. So Bob can juggle. And speaks French, but also speaks English <laughs> or, or, or German. I don't know. How, what do you do here? Like, so say that's the only skill Bob has, but, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but he's you know he speaks a lot of languages, you know, Spanish. So what do you do? Either you have to like have blanks, blanks in here, which is a problem, or what's the other thing you could do? You could just repeat, right? Somehow, somehow the, both are both are problematic because of this. These things have nothing to do with each other. Somehow we get this repetition. It's kind of like a we're we're joining these things when they shouldn't be joined or something. You know, these tables, um, right? So this is bad, <laughs> and we don't like it. Um, so the question is, um, well, 
Well, I guess what I want to do, the rest of what I want to do right now, is to define what, well, what do you think it would mean for two things to be independent? In statistical sense, the knowledge of one does not affect what your guess of the second one would be. Right. Um, so how do we translate that into a relation? Yeah. Well, let's just, maybe we should just say it in words. So what would it mean for these? These two things are independent. So how could I? How could I? How could I phrase that? Like, how could I tell a computer to recognize one? Or maybe that's not right. I'm going to say. It's not an empirical issue. You can't analyze the table. No, you can't analyze the data or the table. But how could I sort of? What kind of definition could I give to it? Just that there's no functional dependency from one to the other and vice versa? Oh, that's interesting. I never thought of that. <laughs> that might work, but that's not what I was thinking of. Um, hmm. Just that they could all occur together? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Um, basically, that. If you give me two things are independent, if if you know, like if I pick one possible value from one and one possible value from the other mm. column, that I can get any pos any pair. You know, that's that's allowed. So if there's no nothing constraining me against doing that, then things are independent. Um, now, I guess that's the same as no functional dependencies if you really think about it. Um, no. All right. saying you want every single possible is, Well, not that it exists in the table. That's but that you should allow. It's possible. Yeah, it's it's not. There's no no restriction against that. But I think you could restrict some of those and still <coughs> well, not have functional. You're right. Shai is right. Shai speaks the truth. So, uh, so you could have two things that are not functionally dependent in some freaky way. That's not as general as this. So the the definition of two columns being independent is that one could show up. You know, like any. You know, if I pick one from first column and something from the second column, there's no res restriction from both showing up. The definition that Dimitri said is yeah. stronger than the one that you see. If you can't have all these independent possibilities, then for sure there's no functional dependencies between them. But it's possible not to have functional dependencies between them, but still not to allow every single combination. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example? Yeah, I don't see the truth of that. I will ah. try to write one. All right. Well, um, let's see. What would I like to do now? I guess if one of them doesn't determine the other one, but it narrows the range of the other one, is that kind of thing? Is it true to say that you avoid all these problems when you don't duplicate data? What do you mean by don't duplicate data? Maybe it's sort of, the, it's sort of a squishy definition, so that's why we need all this. Yeah. So how about you just don't do, I mean, if you have information that you'd say the same thing, in the same situation, you avoid saying the same thing in the same situation by putting it in another table so it doesn't duplicate. Generally, but then there's problems. There, so, yeah, there, there there'll, there'll be problems. So it's, yeah. So it's almost like you do a join, and it's the same thing as a cross product. So we're trying so to think of an example where there is a relationship between them, but one value doesn't determine the other value. Is that right? Well, so I would I would so save that. How about if you had age type, and then age, and age type could be the days, months, or years. So someone who was 73 would have age type Y and then 73 is a baby that was um, 
six months would have m and six. m doesn't determine what the value. Well, it's, I guess you can, you'll have different realistic ranges, but m doesn't actually determine which between zero and twelve is going to appear in the second field. And similarly, a. Yeah, but it does tell you that it's between zero and twelve. Well, that's your constraint that you're imposing. Right. So that is some sort of. Well, that's not. Yeah. Is that a functional dependency? It's not. It's not a functional dependency, I guess. But it. But it is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's functional dependency is very strong, very very strong. So. You're absolutely right. Good answer. Good answer. In any case, I guess. I have. I have. I'd like to work out some more examples, um, but I think it's probably best to wait for the <laughs> continuing recitation. Variable dependency 